Boom. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. I'm here with my new and old friend, yeah, Kermit sure Bistro. <laughs> <laughs> you made me mess up your super cool last name, <laughs> Kermit Bristo. Welcome back for your third time with us. Second this time. Is second time, technically, yeah. Second time. How awesome. you doing, guys? Yes, Kermit's one of our old friends here on Adobe Live. Awesome illustrator, graphic designer, and associate design director at Vault 49 here in New Same. York. Yes, yes. Very cool. Everyone give a warm shout out to Kervin. Give him your best. Hey, there's Lucy. There you go. Yay, one of my coworkers. Hey, Lucy. What's up? We are so waiting all gonna for be all there. of them. Yes. <laughs> Lucy, get everyone else around yeah, the computer. Yeah, yeah, Lucy, tell them to hurry up. <laughs> yes, we got good things to say. Uh, super cool. So if this is your first time joining us on Adobe Live, we are streaming here from the Adobe 99U conference. We have an awesome schedule. We're going to be streaming all day, some of the talks, some artists that are here and from around town. Mm -hmm. We just had Tim Brown from IDEO chatting it up. We've got Kervin right now. And then we have Tammy Coker coming up next. Mm -hmm. You can check out the rest of the schedule on the screen. Very cool. So make sure you stick around. We're going to be doing a Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge at some point. Awesome. What's up, Huxel? Nice to see you. <laughs> D, hi. So, Kervin, do you want to introduce yourself super quickly for those who haven't caught your stream before? Yeah, sure. So, uh, as Kathleen said wonderfully already, my name is Kervin Brousseau. I am an Associate Design Director at Vault 49, and I also moonlight as a freelance illustrator and Ooh. artist. Um, so, I've been in the game for, oh man, over 10 years now. Wow, um, game recognized game. Yeah, and basically I started out actually in architecture, believe really? it or not. So yeah, so that was something that was just an influence from living in an immigrant household. Oh, so yeah. I'm Haitian American, so uh -huh. it was kind of like a law to either become an engineer or an architect or a doctor. So Very interesting. Yeah, so I chose architecture because it had like an element of design that I really mm -hmm. liked, but yeah. then it also had the science and mathematical elements that my parents <laughs> were leaning towards as well. Yeah. So <laughs> we I did that for even. a long time. Eight years, so wow. four years at Catholic U, mm -hmm. and then another four years in my master's at Syracuse U. Wow. Yeah. So always in New York. Um, well, Catholic is actually in DC. Oh. And then Look at me, went back knowing. to New York. Yeah, yeah. That I was see. a good dance move. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, but besides that, um, after finishing my master's and spending some time in Europe as well, mm -hmm. uh, which was a very formative experience for me, actually, I did yeah. that while completing my master's, maybe. I'm not going to show my age, but it was a while ago. Yeah, and he's then, a master, uh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I quickly like sort of discovered during my time there and in Syracuse in general that I really had a passion for illustration. Mm -hmm. And I actually landed my first freelance gig while studying um, with the client, huh. um, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it was a really cool, I think it was Axe Body Spray. How did that happen just randomly? Quote well, <laughs> I launched the website. I didn't really do a great job promoting it, but I think uh, back then people were discovering work on like DeviantArt and like, you know, like That's where I got things. my start too. Yeah, so <laughs> it was just literally a freak accident that they found my work mm -hmm. and um, they hit me up and it was a great just learning experience in general, being yeah. able to engage with clients and realizing how much fun it actually was to actually illustrate with a purpose. Yeah. Um, and then once that was done, I kind of didn't really look back. Mm -hmm. After I graduated, I took some time off and um, kind of refocus my portfolio from architecture into just pure design mm -hmm. and illustration. Wow. Does that project still exist anyway? That Ooh, X project? Yeah, but not yes? online. Oh, okay. I will have to... You didn't bring it with you? you like, no, pull it out. I didn't bring it with me. It wasn't really my proudest moment necessarily. Yay. But it was, it, was a, it was like the first like real big learning yes, experience for me. That's a pat on the back yeah. for sure. Man. What's up, Wes? Tom. Oh, there it is. Oh, hello, of course. Hello. Of course, he spells my name wrong on purpose. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I hope you know them. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Tom says you're on the loudspeaker in the studio. Oh, perfect. So what they did last <laughs> time was when I was doing the Adobe Live thing, um, they put me on a loudspeaker, and then my boss, my boss was going around and just trolling me on all the different computers. So, That's a good boss. JG, if you're there, I'm on to you, son. <laughs> I'm, I'm on ready. To you. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon says you're a cool dude. <laughs> I agree. That's awesome. So that's how you got your start. Yeah. And that makes sense why you're talking about the Corb glasses with mm. your architectural beginnings. Yeah, the guy before I had Corb glasses on, I recognize it. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. And then, so a lot of your work is on mobile. You do a lot mm -hmm. of illustration, yeah. uh, kind of desktop to mobile. How did you get started yeah. even using an iPad? So, in all honesty, my serious introduction to the iPad was through Adobe. 
and they invited <laughs> us to uh, this thing that we like to call lovingly Adobe Camp. And I was like one of the first sort of alumni. Mm -hmm. So like to backtrack a little bit, they did something very similar, like I think in the 80s with yeah. Photoshop when they first oh, okay. launched it. And then they invited some artists and they played around with it. Mm -hmm. And it was like a very sort of cutting edge technological experience mm -hmm. for them. And people felt that that would like change the game. So they tried to recreate that with this new Adobe Camp. Um, with the iPad and introduced huh. to us specifically Adobe Draw, Adobe mm -hmm. Sketch, and a few other ones. Yeah. And Photoshop Mix mm -hmm. right, was there as well. Oh, back in the day. Um, yeah, and it was just all these really, really cool creatives, some of which still have relations with Adobe today. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are friends of mine now, ever yeah. since that experience too. Oh, that's and, great. Um, you know, you know, the funny thing is like when you're a designer and you're and you have your methods, mm -hmm. it's very, very scary to kind of change those methods, right? Yes. Because you come up with efficiencies that just work for you, and especially when you're working day to day, you don't want to do anything that kind of, like you don't want to break anything that, that isn't yes. broken. You right, know? You and don't use brain it. power when you don't need to. Exactly, but what drew me back into the iPad when it was introduced to me was getting in touch with my roots of drawing again. Mm -hmm. So joining architecture and like practicing architecture and even going into digital illustration, I was very mouse heavy. And I was also eventually Wacom heavy as well, but still mm -hmm. quite looking at a screen. There was like this separation, the almost felt like yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. felt like a video game in a way. You know, like kind of just trying to coordinate the the cursor with the. That's how I compare it to. I've never thought about it that way. That's, that's exactly cool. what it feels mm -hmm, like because you have mm -hmm. to be able to understand that that perception of yeah. where your hand is in relation to the cursor. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But the iPad, you're literally just looking at it all simultaneously, yeah. as if you're sketching in a notebook. Yeah. And I think not only did that open my eyes to uh, my love for drawing again, but mm -hmm. then also realizing how efficient it was to do it that way. Yes. Like, to be able to draw more quickly and in a way it kind of made you more confident as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but whenever I draw like with the Wacom, I still get like that shaky hand syndrome. Me too. Where it's just like, yeah. my lines just cannot be, I just, I need that visual mm -hmm. connect. And even so. like having your hand down and looking yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah. whenever I draw weird. with that disconnect, my things always get very like warped. Yeah, like it's, it's like, strange. Whoa, strange. It's a really, really strange process. <laughs> so just having the iPad and like just drawing on it with mm -hmm. Apple Pencil and just being able to see exactly what's where my where the pencil is pointing yeah. on the cursor. Yeah. Is, yeah, it so it yeah. like allowed you to be more yourself as an artist yeah. and more confident. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And there's even like I've even since getting the iPad, I've met other people. Um, there's even some people at work as mm -hmm. well that also use the iPad now. It's just it's just a quick way to work. You know you are. <laughs> I know Shout you're watching. Jen. Um, <laughs> cool. So it's really, um, yeah, it, it definitely changed the game for me and mm -hmm. made me more prolific as an artist as well. It's got me more encouraged to be a bit more experimentative and uh, really just use things like social media as a platform to just generate content. Yes. That's basically. Right. Yeah. Very cool. And chat, if you have any questions about uh, Kervin's experience, his journey, what he's been talking about the last couple of minutes, Feel free to pop them in the chat pod. I have all of Kervin's kind of social media pulled up on my computer. Uh, so if you want to check him out, pretty easy to find yeah, online. Just the last name. You know? Yeah, you got a big footprint on the <laughs> web. That's awesome. Um, hey, <laughs> there's my boy Gene. What's up, bro? That's awesome. I was just going to say, yeah. Gene has a good question. Uh, where do you find most of your inspiration? Because you definitely have yeah. a style. Like I could see yeah. your work and be like, yeah, that's Kervin's. You know what? Um, it definitely fluctuates. Early on, it was like Japanese animation, mm -hmm. Japanese culture. And that still comes into play, as well as like science fiction. But nowadays, huh. a lot of it is drawn into fashion. Yeah. And, um, and you kind of see it in my, in my earlier work. Uh, if you were to go to, for example, so you see the, the green cap. If you click on that one, that was the series that kind of started it all for me in terms of diving into this sort of photographic collage, yeah. um, looking at other artists that I was inspired by, like Hattie Stewart. Mm -hmm. um, they were definitely really, really interesting in terms of what they were doing, combining those different mediums, and I uh. wanted to find my own take in that. And what started the genesis of this project was actually working with the client. Mm -hmm. They approached me to do uh, some fashion ideas for like some crew neck sweaters, and at the time I wasn't, I wasn't quite confident in um, my drawing ability to draw figures. Yeah. So I was like, well, why don't I just use photographs? and just That's how it concept happens? my, yeah, yeah, literally, the That's concept so cool. my ideas on mm -hmm. there and run it by them and see what they think. And then I decided to share my experiment on social media and it was just really well received. And I was like, maybe yeah. there's something here for this. And then I just decided to just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And it got me into the habit of just creating for creation's sake, which is a lot, which is something that a lot of designers tend to be hesitant towards. Yeah. 
and myself included, because you always want to have some kind of confinement, some kind of rules. Mm -hmm. And I've discovered that through the iterative process of just constantly creating, so regardless many. of rules, mm -hmm. they kind of come like naturally. Yes. You already start to set boundaries for mm -hmm. yourself, like working with a photograph always. Yeah. Maybe the color scheme is restricted to a certain way, always mm -hmm. keeping it to a particular item of clothing. So the rules are always there, regardless of how reckless it may seem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it became much more serial and uh, uh, I eventually became very efficient with it as well. Yeah. So I did about like a hundred or know, so like of these still different. Scrolling. Yeah, yeah, I did a hundred of these <laughs> different illustrations. Um, some of them were like was found imagery in uh -huh. magazines or on Google, and I would try to like credit the photographer if I could find them. Yeah. And some of them were actually photographic collaborations with photographers I got to meet on oh, social really? or in person, which That's is really cool, cool as well. Yeah. Um, so the project just eventually evolved and became its own monster. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, after that, um, I decided to take my learnings from this project and just kind of expand it into mm. my other, mm -hmm. other designs. Wow. Yeah, I was um, thinking that this acid fashion, when I searched your name on Google, that's what came up. It was like, yeah. Urban so acid fashion. Yeah. It's like, all right, this is where you got to start. Super cool. <laughs> and Carrie's saying that I love how the black and white background allows the colors of the fashion to pop. Yeah, that's what I noticed. You notice I, I jumped around a lot back then, but yeah. I mean, those black and white photography really let the, yeah. the colors really shine mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And, and that, then, oh, go yeah. ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say that's kind of like a, a confinement that you put on yourself as well. Like if it is mm -hmm. black and white, then I have to make the colors uh, really vibrant and bright. Yeah. And the challenge here as well too, and I wasn't always successful, but how do you also maintain, especially when I was collaborating with a photographer, mm -hmm. maintain their original integrity? Yeah. So uh, a lot of times, like, the reason why most of these are very sort of paired back and I'm not like doing like a complete sort of takeover of the whole background mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. I want to maintain the original silhouette and composition yeah. that the original photographer had in mind. Mm -hmm. And it's just me just augmenting that somehow. Yes. That was the approach. Yeah, um, yeah, it's subtle. Even though it's very vibrant, um, mm -hmm. it seems very constructed and subtle. Yeah, exactly. Nicely done. Huxel says any of these could be some cool album cover. And some of them have become album covers, actually. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't shared any yet, but okay. um, I've done some work with a few sort of musicians and things like that. And they're just mm -hmm. like, here's a photograph. Could you illustrate in the same vein? Yeah. And I would do that plus some other sort of illustrative elements to kind of give it like more of like a world building yeah. uh, vibe oh, as well. Cool, a little animation going on. Yeah, I also used it. It was definitely like just an experimental hub. Just mm -hmm. I would try everything on there. Um, Why not? That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm wondering, for all of these different pieces of clothing, did mm -hmm. you design all of these? Yeah, yeah, I designed them all from scratch. So, wow. Um, some of them were like, I would see like a fashion collection or something. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, oh, that's an interesting silhouette. Or that's an yeah. interesting like cut that they did. What mm -hmm. would be my take on that? Yeah. But everything like from start to finish is the genesis started with me and do it anyway, so. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Super impressive. So if you want to check out Kervin's Behance, Go ahead and search his name. You can mm -hmm. do uh, Brousseau.com as well. Yeah. And we wanted to maybe jump into a couple of these projects. Yeah, someone and talk actually a had, a, had an interesting question. I think sure. Kato, she said, What was my inspiration for Buddhizu Chapter 1, I believe? Mm. Um, which was this one. Uh huh. So this is a, a totally, like, 100% iPad project, which is what I mean by that is that. Um, so my process typically is starting the iPad mm -hmm. and then wrap it up on the desktop. Yeah. But pretty much all of these were start was from start to finish all on the iPad, wow. and then I would only bring it into the desktop to then just do some slight tweaks mm -hmm. in terms of like adding some noise, and then that was oh, it. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So it was like 98% done on the iPad, and this piece right here, some of you might recognize, is actually became the. Um, the splash page for Illustrator 2019. Yeah. Let's see if I can open cool. it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to open Illustrator, see if it, please don't <laughs> have it changed. Pops. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yay! There it is. Proof. Super cool. See, I'm not a liar. Yeah. I tell the truth sometimes, <laughs> Believe <right>? it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so somebody says, yeah, there's AI. Yep. There's Illustrator. Yeah, so, so this project, so what was the idea behind this project? It was so random. So first it started off with just this idea of I kind of wanted to keep the fashion thing going, but how do I add another layer to it mm -hmm. and then challenge myself by not using photography at all? Okay. So I tried to kind of keep the language the same in that it's fashion focused and it's custom pieces. Mm -hmm. Photography was still an element in there, but rather than tracing it or kind of flat out using them in the work, yeah. some of them were just references to which I could then use to jumpstart the idea of the composition. Yeah. So 
Um, so a lot of them are like, like for example, this one actually took a photograph of a coworker of mine mm -hmm. uh, at work, Lucy, and then just <gasps> decided to use that as a visual reference to then create this um, illustration. Yeah. And a lot of it is literally just like a play of fashion, like this sort of essence of augmented reality or, hallucin or hallucination. Yeah, right here. Um, totally. So there's like a consistent through line, but overall, each of the themes were very sort of raw and just made up as I went along. Yeah, just kind of you, but yeah. on paper. Yeah. That's and, really cool. Yeah. And the idea to make it like a tile, so if you were to go back, and um, there should be one where it's like, might be in the beginning, yeah. So All of them. This actually was inspired by the fact that I wanted to use Instagram as a platform to feature this, first and oh, foremost. Oh, okay. And so, and everyone was kind of doing this tiling game. So mm -hmm. I was like, what would be my take on that? And I was kind of looking at, you know, stained glass references, oh, things of that sort. So, yeah. not that this is religious by any means, but mm -hmm. just the idea of organizing it in a way that kind of, um, comic books was another reference for this yeah. too. Like kind of making it seem sequential, but yes. then having this central panel that kind of anchored it and seemed a bit seamless mm -hmm. around this generated theme. Yeah. Um, and 15, I think it's 15 panels, that, that seemed like the right sort of number mm -hmm. to kind of balance it out. And I am working on a second one, actually, eventually. Ooh, I wonder which, if it'll be the same color palette, maybe a different one? Maybe a different one, maybe I don't know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to build my own hype now. But okay. Pretty much, yeah, I'm, I'm working on, a, on the chapter two, um, mm -hmm. theme TBD, but mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be in collaboration with my brother, actually. Oh, cool. And um, who's, a, who's a really, really talented producer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm basically just creating his whole brand for his album. Oh, yeah. very cool. And I love how this central theme, the central tile, is literally like fingers pointing to yeah. the other pieces. It's very, like you said, sequential. Yeah. It tells a story. And you know what's funny is that a lot of times I'll make something and then forget about it because mm. I'll have a different purpose for it in mind. Mm -hmm. And when trying to figure out what the central anchoring piece would be, I went back to these hand illustrations that I did like maybe a year prior. And I was like, oh, this could kind of make sense in terms of fitting it within this overall theme. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, that's it. Ooh, Kita says chapter two should be blue. Maybe. Blue and orange go well. Maybe. Very well. Yeah, that's awesome. Dagny wants you to give uh, the chat a challenge, a drawing challenge. Really? What's a good uh, exercise that gets your brain going? That's a good question. What is a good exercise? I mean, just just from like from a technical standpoint, I love watching online courses on YouTube and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and just just learning from the greats. Yeah. Like a lot of the masses are just people you don't know, people who are just doing these courses day to day, teaching mm -hmm. people how to draw. And um, a big change for me for this piece in particular, like these pieces, um, was looking at I think his name is Steve Huston. Hope I got his name mm -hmm. right. Who's a, who's a very very talented uh, painter and figure drawer. And uh, I would look at his and things like that to then understand human anatomy, mm. which is like something that I'm trying to master now, is yeah. like understanding not just the face, but just like the human figure, and then eventually being able to compose my own compositions yeah. in terms of stances and poses without needing photographic reference all the wow. time to refer to. Yeah, how do you feel um, like you're doing? I think right I'm getting now. there. Yeah. I think the main thing is constantly just practicing and just really mm -hmm. trying to pay due diligence to, to the craft because a lot of times people just always want the finished result mm -hmm. and they try to s sprint towards that yeah. and a lot of it is a part of the process of like making the mistakes mm -hmm. and learning from them and then not always having to show them either. Like there's the so plenty true. of stuff that I've done that I just don't care to show because it's not ready or I feel like it was just something for me to just practice with. Yeah, know? definitely. Yeah. Actually, Darren was just asking about drawing figures. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a certain part of the human figure uh, that's super tough for you that you have to practice? All of it. All, All of, of it is tough. It. No, seriously, it used We're to be weird. it used to be hands. Yeah. I hated drawing hands. Mm -hmm. The hand is such a complex thing. Yeah. And like what really helped me decipher that was again looking at some online courses and just the human body, like all things, is just a series of geometries. Mm -hmm. So you can find triangles, squares, circles, and like yep. once you lay the skeleton down of any part that you are trying to illustrate, mm -hmm. regardless of it's like human, animal, furniture, like that bare bones is the most difficult part I've discovered. Mm -hmm. Once that looks right, then filling in the blanks, so to speak, becomes yeah. much, much easier. If you look at all the greats that do it, very few greats are actually, like, I mean, they're geniuses, but mm -hmm. they're just kind of drawing on the fly, mm -hmm. um, something them with just ink. Yeah. But if you look at comic book artists, for example, or um, any, any sort of like fine art illustrator, they'll like set a base. Mm -hmm. Like, typically like when someone sets up a face, they'll draw uh, an egg with like yeah, crosshairs. 
And like yep. literally that enough, if you can get that down right the first time, mm -hmm. like usually the hard work is typically done, at least for me, because the skeleton is such a difficult thing to, yeah. to grasp. Right. Not like the literal skeleton, but just literally the form in which case you want to compose. Yeah, we see it happening yeah. kind of right here. Yeah, so like in some of these time lapses, um, you start to see that um, I try to lay down like key lines mm -hmm. that'll determine the clothing. So when I draw clothing on a figure, it's much easier because yes. anatomy is more forgiving in them because mm -hmm. you're covering all the parts mm -hmm. that you don't really need to, to yeah. worry about. You just focus on the head and legs. So if you follow simple proportions, overall, it should come together quite easily. Mm -hmm. When it becomes more form-fitting stuff or like action poses, yes. it becomes very difficult. And I usually will need some sort of a photographic reference to mm -hmm. kind of see um, where things need to be. Yeah. And what I used to do actually a lot of the time was back in the day, I would Frankenstein pieces together from different photographs. Oh to make your perfect to make my right pose and mm -hmm. i'm like all right that's the pose i want to do and then i'll look at that and mm -hmm. use that as a reference as well mm -hmm. so a lot of artists actually do that too totally yeah, yeah i think there's something to be said about using references and how it's not a bad thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's very good if you want yeah. things to look good and to learn you need to look <laughs> at things to learn how they look yeah. Totally. Jovanovich has not, that's an inside joke from. <laughs> from oh really? <laughs> yeah. I heard that they yeah. were going to be maybe causing mm -hmm. a little bit of trouble yeah, in the chat. As expected. As, <laughs> as expected. expected. Wouldn't expect anything less. That's awesome. <laughs> Jessica says I must be an old illustrator. I've never seen that. Oh, you've never seen the splash screen? You got to update, Jessica. <laughs> See that curve and work. Super cool. Carrie says that's clever. Yes. Yeah, a lot of thought goes into this. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, so after Bridie Zoo, I was like, what was the next thing? Mm -hmm. Besides chapter two, of course. <laughs> so um, I've been doing a lot of collaborations with photographers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so if you go to the Panther on the left, so that one was one fix. I did with a guy named Wes Tarka, a really, really talented mm -hmm. photographer who I think lives in Harlem. He lives in New York City, huh. originally from Harlem. Not originally, but living in Harlem. Uh -huh. And he did a photo shoot uh, with this really talented <laughs> model. And we decided to just create this like, sort of world around her, mm -hmm. around her like attitude. Yeah. Um, and just came up with these three very distinct illustration styles um, and just had like a different way in to kind of shine her personality kind mm -hmm. of I had like a visceral response in terms of what she was doing in a photograph and how he captured her and yeah. then created this sort of um, illustration world around her yes so some of it utilizes topography some of it was just pure illustration and yeah again you will see some time lapses this is again directly off the iPad which is a great feature, by the way. Literally, mm -hmm. it's just remembering your whole history. I love it. You just hit share, create time lapse, and you're done. It's it's amazing. Yeah. So people love to see them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great it's thing. It's super to add. useful because I don't know. There's something about time lapses that adds a bit of sort of authenticity to to the um, to the work. I don't know. It's nice seeing like how things are created. Nice. Yeah. Cool. It looks like we have a little bit of excitement happening behind us. It is chat and win time. Did you know oh. we were going to do this? No, but this I'm, is a surprise. I'm excited. Yes. Let's do this. That's true. You've done Adobe <laughs> Live before. You know what's yeah. up. So if this is your first time, we are going to be giving away a very cool gift. It's going to be a Tatley sticker set, which is awesome. If you don't know Tatley, really cool temporary tattoos made by artists. Yes, we can see the whole collection over here. Mm -hmm. There's some nerdy artist stuff going on, some cool feathers. Awesome. So if you want to be entered to win, we're going to pick a random winner. And the way that you're going to enter is you're going to answer a question in chat. So cool. is there anything that you'd like to know from the chat? Oh, interesting question. All right. Hmm. What would I like to know? See, now this is where I wish I had prepared time to ask a question. But all right. So it could be anything. Um, what was one sort of, I'm, assume, I'm hoping everyone on here is an artist or like has done art a to a certain degree. Of some a creative sort. of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, tell me one problem you came across and how did you try to resolve it? Ooh, yeah. cool. We're going to learn from you. Yeah. All right, who's our lucky winner going to be? We need to have your problems and your solutions in the chat. <laughs> Everything is 4 3. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it was 23. That's a deep question. I know it we is. need to give them it's some time. It's putting me a bit on the spot. I know. I <laughs> How know. about try to say it in one sentence? 
quick and easy. Yeah. Do you have an example that you could uh, help? That can say in one sentence? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, whenever I'm stuck on a design problem, I collaborate. Collaborate. So, yeah. Collaboration nice. always helps. That's awesome. And that can mean different things. That could be like, I'm collaborating with another designer, like I bring him in on the fold and get feedback, mm -hmm. or I literally open myself up to the client and be like, hey, I'm kind of stuck here. Can we like communicate yeah. and talk about what's the next approach? That's a really cool yeah. and uh, kind of vulnerable position to put yourself into, yeah, especially sure. when you're going back to a client being like, hey, I need and your help. Clients really appreciate that. You know, you want to have that sense of camaraderie and trust. Mm -hmm. we, do, we do this at work as well. It's like, that's what strengthens our relationships, is yeah. that having that sense of openness and being like, it comes from a place where we want to provide the best solution for them. Yeah. And that doesn't always come by just, just kind of designing in a bubble, you right. know. And working in, in the studio, you know, even when you're collaborating with other people, because some of us are quite like-minded individuals, mm -hmm. you're still kind of the, like working within that bubble. Yes. And like having some outside perspective a la the client, especially mm -hmm. if they're a design-focused client as well, is super useful. Yeah. So. Totally yeah. opens your world. Congratulations, Katie Humble. You are the winner of the awesome Tatley, uh, I almost said sticker, no? Tattoo set. <laughs> Super cool. Yay, Katie. She's excited. So make sure you keep an eye on your Behance messages. Uh, the Adobe Live team will be chatting with you soon. It might take a little while for these to get to you, mm -hmm. but they will. And mm -hmm. it'll be well worth the wait. And send us pics when you get them. I want to see you all tatted up. It's nice. going to be great. <laughs> Oh no, you're getting trolled. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Tom, of course. Oh. Luckily for me, Tom, I'm not the first person to do that, nor will I be the Oops. last. <laughs> so somebody said that they would run into a problem uh, for inspiration and then they would go to like forums or uh, other online communities for help. That's a good point, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love doing things like blog. I mean, you could ask any of my coworkers. I love blogging and mm -hmm. I love uh, collecting, whether it's on Pinterest or I, I, mine is on Tumblr. Yeah. And I'm constantly, like daily, just whenever I have downtime, just finding, right click, save as, yes. posting it up. Because it's something really, really nice about having an entire collection that you can also share because it, it kind of lets people in on your line of thinking. Mm -hmm. And you have a design voice in a way without having to write like a 10 page essay yeah. on what design means to you. It's, it's like a visual sort of diary, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Katie, who won the sticker, said, I had a client that was way out of my comfort zone and I just had to understand their needs and find a solution instead yeah. of like trying to fit the mold. Exactly. It's client. exactly that. Communication, I think, is always key when trying to crack design, um, especially when it comes to coming up with solutions that are, as Katie mentioned, outside of her comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So, that because that's where a lot of the growth comes from as well. Um, when you make mistakes and you own up to them, mm -hmm. or at least you come across a way in which case you need to have an extra layer of communication, yes. I think it's always, always important to not shy away from that. Because a lot of the times, that's where most of the problems come from is yes. that people are just not communicating, period. And so Ooh, yep. um, there needs to be a level of transparency, mm -hmm. you know, about the design process and especially on, on the client side as well or, or the designer side mm -hmm. also if you're working with another designer or another photographer. Yeah. That level of transparency is pretty key. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're working with clients who aren't designers. Yeah, if there's literally to. just a misunderstanding, a lack of language mm -hmm. to share with each other. Yeah. Uh, Alexandra says that she uses Behance for inspiration, Adobe Live too. Nice. That's a good answer. Well done. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> People are giving trolley answers as well. Of course. I love it. All of them. <laughs> Nick Everyone. says, the guy sitting opposite me plays the worst music, so I bought nice headphones, and that yeah, was the solution. Talking about me. <laughs> talking about me. So I'm, I'm uh, that one guy. The, the sort of studio DJ, so to speak. Are you? I have to play the music. From your I computer? I mean, I say have to. I do enjoy doing it, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, they're, they're grateful. They may play it off like they hate it, but they love it. And Deep if they time, don't, they, they just yeah. do that. <laughs> there yeah. you go. That was actually a running joke that uh, a former co-worker of mine used to do. Um, he used to look right at me and just kind of put, like, not even break glance, just put <laughs> headphones on <laughs> and just, like, shake his head and turn away. Yeah. How dare you? Yeah. Yeah, got that a lot. Oh, man. Chat, that's awesome. And Chat, I'm interested to hear not only how you solve problems, but also where you get inspiration. So mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about Pinterest and mm -hmm. just online, and they were talking Pinterest, about Adobe Live, Behance. Um, Tumblr sometimes. Tumblr a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. um, and just like I'm trying to get into the habit of also looking at like more tactile references as well, so yes. magazines. Mm -hmm. And like I'll just take pictures on my iPhone sometimes if I see something that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and that's partially also why I really got into 
into photography a bit more too. Uh -oh. Just like being able to catalog things that catch my eye. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really, really nice sort of alternative creative outlet for mm -hmm. me. If I want to like take a break from the sort of digital, because like even when you're doing what you love to do every day, it does get monotonous because yes. you're doing it every day. Yes. So having like a break and like just different hobbies, it definitely helps. Right, yeah. and we were talking actually before we went live about how uh, you kind of have to be a master of few, but kind of know a lot about a yes. lot of things. Yeah, Being yeah. a content creator, mm -hmm. um, how do you kind of balance that? How do you know when to, how far into a certain discipline that you need to go? Do you just learn on the fly? Well, the very first thing you have to ask yourself is, well, first of all, what are my interests? Yes. Secondly, what can I do, and mm -hmm. am I okay with that? Yeah. Like, because like it's. It's not being like a quote unquote jack of all trades or like trying not to be siloed into anything. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily about trying to do it all, but more about allowing yourself the opportunity to learn new things that can hopefully help um, enhance your craft. So, um, so what I mean by that is like, I for myself, I do a lot of illustration as you've yes. seen, and a lot of it is vector based, a lot of it is raster based, mm -hmm. but I also do 3D as well. I saw that in and your portfolio. Yeah, so part of that was because joining Vault gave me the opportunity to learn how to do 3D. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, I always it was always something that I wanted to do because I felt like it could just add another layer of texture to my work. Totally. Um, and just like having that other skill set. So I'm by no means a master at 3D design like the rest of my coworkers. But at the same time, <laughs> it's still a very, very useful tool for me to yeah. then have another creative outlet to generate ideas. Yes. And, and sometimes the two come together. So this was one piece that I did, um, which is, I, I love sneakers, I'm a sneakerhead. Yeah. I think even more so since meeting certain people, <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to create like this sort of neon piece that kind of made oh. 3D sculptures. And, and the hope was to eventually maybe make this one mm -hmm. day. But, mm -hmm. you know, neon sculptures are quite an arduous task, yes. to say the least. Man, yeah. I could imagine some uh, retailer wanting this to be like merchandising in their store. Yeah, exactly. That it's was a exactly whole career. That. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's like a whole other skill set mm -hmm. that I haven't been able to focus in on right away, Yeah. but it's still something that I really, really enjoy doing. And wow. then if you were to get out of that, there's another project that's very, very similar. Yeah, oh so my like, gosh, all of these. Yeah, so like that one, for example. That was where like this whole sort of three-dimensional sculpturing started for me yes. in terms of and this, is, this was like the turning point in terms of my 3D and it's, how I yeah. started to um, um, really, really sink my teeth into what Cinema 4D had to offer. Wow, okay, so this yeah. is uh, Cinema 4D. Yeah, Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D Very and then cool. finished off in Photoshop. Wow. Yeah. Super cool. I love how you've just diversified and made yourself more valuable. Yeah. And it's also just something that you think is cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And at Vault, because we're, we're still quite a small studio, um, there is always an opportunity to take on new tasks and new mm. challenges. Mm -hmm. Partially because you want to, but also because we have to. Like, it's, Someone has it's, to do it's it. It's just a necessary part of, yeah. of the job. So um, there is not a single person in that studio um, that is siloed to just one specific mm. thing. We are all capable of doing a multitude of different tasks. Yes. And while we may not each be able to do all of them, there's always someone else in the studio who can mm -hmm. do the thing that we can't do. Mm -hmm. So collaboration is always very, very key as well. Yes. I bet that gives you a little bit of relief knowing that if you are assigned something that you don't feel like you're super strong in, there's right. someone else on your team that can help you and come alongside you. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Dee says, those 3D effects though. Yes. <laughs> Someday it'll be real. I would love to see these hanging on a wall in a warehouse. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Super cool. So yeah. we, we have about eight minutes left oh, yeah. with Kervin. Uh, chat, if you have any more questions, please feel free to send them over. Now would be the time. Yeah. Got that crunch time going on. And then we have uh, Tammy Coker coming up next to work on his Poster A Day project and give you a little sneak peek into how that all magic happens uh, and show you his process. Yeah, Super sure. cool. Joseph says it's so shocking. <laughs> 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 and Ricardo says there's too much talent in one person. Buttering you up. No, I mean, do do what I can. Do, <laughs> do what I gotta do. You know. Yeah, it seems like you love it. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's really what it comes from. Just love of the craft, love mm -hmm. the love of my uh, profession as well. Yeah. Um, and just actually also working day to day with people who constantly inspire me yeah. too. Like just seeing people. It's it's not envy. It's just like wow, like that's amazing. Like I wish I could do that. And it's like kind of going home and trying to find your way in. Mm -hmm. I do that every day. So it's it's really really cool to yeah. be able to 
not only be a freelancer, but to also to come into a workspace that evokes inspiration as well. Yeah, I think that's such a magical thing that yeah. is really freeing for designers and creatives, that difference between envy and appreciation. Yeah, absolutely. Knowing that like, you can really appreciate what someone else does and it doesn't tear you down. Exactly. It just inspires you to do more. Exactly, yeah. Super cool. We're getting our pictures taken. Very <laughs> fancy. I know. A paparazzi <laughs> I coming through here. Yeah, super cool. Uh, Chris <laughs> wants to know what camera do you have your eye on next? Camera? Mm. Do you have a so, favorite? So I've, I've become a bit of a collector. Oh. Uh, and I've constantly been like, my collection's on rotation. Right now, I'm really into film. So oh, cool. I'm looking at getting potentially a Voigtlander, like a rangefinder camera, which wow. would be amazing. Um, and as of right now, I have a couple of Nikons, like an mm -hmm. F2, F3, and I shoot digitally with a Sony. So, yeah, Very cool. that's what I do. Nice. Chat, let us know. What kind of cameras do you like? Yeah. <laughs> Joseph said, wait, that was a mock-up for the 3D. Uh, the neon, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, that was a mock-up. Yeah, this is just all it's 3D. It's not real. It's not real, no. It's just real in the mind. Thank you, though. That's a good compliment. Yes, <laughs> definitely. What's up, Eric Sue? Good to see you. Uh, let's see, Noelle is saying that they get inspiration from posters they see on their commute to work, as well as Instagram, Pinterest, Behance. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly that. Speaking of Instagram, actually, uh, I wanted to bring a light into a great project that I've done uh, yes, with yes, these yes. wonderful people called Zeba. Mm -hmm. So basically, Zeba is an amazing sort of fashion apparel brand that um, kind of gives back. Um, awesome. If you click on the link in the Instagram description, description you, you'll start to see more what they do. But I got the opportunity to do two specific pieces for their collection. So this was the first one uh, called The Empress. And it was just a really, really fun um, project that I got to do with them. Um, I kind of worked with them on the genesis of this project. They kind of came to me not really sure of what to do, but mm -hmm. I approached the idea of maybe commissioning multiple artists for this massive collection yeah. and um, potentially even collaborating together at different capacities to create this whole vibe. Yeah. Um, and this was entirely done on the iPad as well. Whoa. Yeah. Very this was cool. a lot of fun. How did they feel about that? Do clients ever feel like, wait, you're going to do this on an iPad? Or do you no. not even tell them? <laughs> they don't even bat an eye. They don't even yeah. ask the question. It's really just about, can you meet the deadline? Is it good? And what are your ideas? Yeah. Outside of that, there's no question about what the process is. Mm -hmm. And it's great because I find myself being more, not only efficient, but also more creative on the iPad. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I feel myself like this nature of clicking, yes. um, it's not like you're any less of an artist, but for me, I, I gain a more fulfilled experience mm -hmm. going back to that idea of traditional craft. And yeah. for me, it's like having that essence of pencil to paper. Right. So what was the idea behind this specific graphic? I know it's called the Impress. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some power uh, so. exuding. Obviously, the first form of inspiration was Grace Jones, as yes, you can see. Yes, like the flat She top. Is, is an amazing uh, fashion icon and inspiration. Um, so looking at that sort of Grace Jones as silhouette, I decided to kind of merge this idea of like uh, beauty and, and fauna. And what's nice about this is that it, it has a kind of androgynous look as well. Yep. Like Grace Jones, which is also quite known for that yep. sort of androgynous look. So I didn't want the, the sort of piece I made here to kind of skew male or female necessarily. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted it to be unisex and ambiguous in terms of who would wear it. So that's yes. why um, it kind of works regardless of mm -hmm. Who's wearing the piece, basically? Yeah, the same with the color palette. It's yeah. just awesome. It doesn't yeah. really skew one way or the other. Super cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And this is one of two pieces. The next piece, if you click on the link, you'll see it's called Fauna, which is more like a pattern influence. Um, Over yeah. here? Yeah, you can click on it. Yeah, it's fine. All fun. right. So that's the other piece I did there. Oh, dude, what? Which is like more pattern I love influence. And that. some of the people that are familiar with my work, I like working a lot with patterns. So mm -hmm. this is kind of like literally taking acid fashion to life and just putting it on a, on a crew neck, which is pretty cool. This does look like acid fashion. Yeah. That is yeah. awesome. Chat, if you want to get your hands on some of this, <laughs> here's the link. Go check it out. So we just have a couple minutes left. Chat, any yeah, last sure. term questions, feel free to ask. People are wondering um, what kind of tools you use on the iPad. You've used Sketch, oh. Draw, Project Gemini. Sketch and Draw. I have been playing with Project Gemini quite a lot, um, which if you guys are following me, I'm sure you'll see some stuff on that soon mm -hmm, enough. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Sketch and Draw are like, that's like my bread and butter now. Yeah. Like, and like kind of working in tandem with them, doing a lot of the initial sketching in Sketch, of course, and then bring it to Draw to vectorize it. I love working in Vector. I just like having that opportunity to infinitely scale things if yes. need be. 
which is quite nice. And yeah. a lot of the detailing and stuff like that can have quite a raster like appeal, mm -hmm. depending on how you treat the line work as well. Yeah. And then I'll bring it back into like a Photoshop, for example, like a vector smart object to add some texture if need be. Right. That's so the amazing. magic there is if you have a CC subscription, you can work on the iPad and then literally yeah. just send it to your desktop. Yeah. Which is very magical. You can literally press a button and it'll open. Yes. And you get to see your own work on the splash <laughs> screen. It's amazing. <laughs> exactly. One of these days. Yes. You too. You can too could do it. Huh? That's just last page. You yes. could. Awesome. <laughs> so we have just about a minute left. Like I said, we've got Tammy Coker coming up next with Rufus working on his project or poster a day project. Very cool. Check out some of the most recent tutorials that he's published on the CC um, YouTube channel. Very, very cool. Alex says the skateboard graphics you made are so awesome. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Alex. In chat, we're going to be back in just about five minutes. So, Kervin, if people want to follow you on social, where yes. do they go? Literally, if you know my last name, that's it for everything, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Behance, my dot com. Um, you'll know where to find me. Don't be shy. Say hello. I usually mm -hmm. say hi back. Aww. And it's been a pleasure chatting with you all. Such a nice so guy. Much. All right, we'll be back in just a couple minutes, everyone. Stay tuned for Tammy Coker. Yeah. Bye. Later.